What's up, everybody? Yeah. Smiling faces, smiling faces. Y'all, it's Christmas time. It's, it's December. My watch says it's December 11th. How many more days till Christmas? How many of you have the little calendar with the little chocolates that you get? Does anybody? Anybody? Yeah, you got them? Yeah. I was always wondering, like, who in the family gets to eat the chocolate on each day? Like, is it the older sibling, the middle child, the youngest sibling, the parents? I never really knew. So we don't do that in my family. We just, we just look at the calendar and like, oh, yeah, it's Christmas. Some of you probably already know what you want for Christmas, right? Ray, go ahead. This is crowd participation. Raise your hand if you know what you want for Christmas. You've got your list done. You've checked it twice. Yeah. Okay. You know exactly what you want. Okay, put your hands down. Uh, those of you, I kind of saw it. Those of you that don't know what they want still and haven't made a list, raise your hand. Okay. Okay. Anyone else that didn't raise their hand, they're just not here tonight, that's fine. Um, hopefully I'll wake you up. Hopefully the Word of God will wake you up this evening. Um, so anyways, yeah, gifts are awesome. And I remember being in youth group and this shoe had just dropped. Now this shoe I heard was like one of the dopest shoes ever, one of the coolest shoes I've ever heard about. This person was telling me all about it. I hadn't seen a picture yet. I had no idea what they looked like. And this guy was like, you got to get these shoes, man. They're awesome. They're so unique. They're the most comfortable shoe in the world. And I was like looking at him like, bro, what are you talking about? Like most comfortable shoe in the world, they're Vans, right? Am I right, Visco girls? Vans. <laughs> Anyways. <laughs> um, but like for real though, the ultra cush, ultra light, high mid-top Vans, like those are the best. I don't need anything else, right? And he was like, no, no, no. They're so comfortable. They look so unique. They're, there's nothing else like them. Also, they do this thing where you buy a shoe, they give a shoe to someone in a third country like that's in need. And I was like, man, that is awesome. That is so cool. I'm all about it. And I put that on my Christmas list. I never even saw the shoe until I went home that day. I got up on the dial up. Um, some of you knows what that means. And then I looked on the internet and it took forever. And I finally came across this shoe right here. You guys know Tom's shoes. Now, dial up. No, nah, that's a little old, but it's fine. It's fine. This is what I saw, and I immediately was like, what? <laughs> no. Like, who's wearing Toms right now? That's probably why they're going bankrupt. Anyways, okay. Um, it's, a great, it's a great business model. It's a great, like, it's cool and all, but, like, I couldn't get down with it. The more and more I looked at it, I was like, man, this is an ace bandage with some color and a sole. Look at that. Seriously, though, like, they, like, got the idea. They got wrapped up. They had to wrap their ankle up, and they are probably like, hmm, I can make a shoe out of this. Put a little sole on it, put a little color, call it a day, and give it to needy people in third world countries. Now, I love that. I love that it was a gift that keeps on giving. See, we as humans, we love gifts that keep on giving. And so me being selfish, because I am, let's be real, I, I'm, sometimes I'm selfish. I like getting things, but I like to know when I get things, somebody else is receiving something. And so I was like, man, this is really cool. It wasn't until later, I was like, you know what? They got the mid tops. I, I, can, I can be down with those. I didn't wear them tonight because they didn't really match with what I was wearing because Toms just don't match. But Toms are a great shoe. It's great. And if you rock them, you rock them. I think some people look good in them. I just didn't think that I could rock this. And, you know, if I did... People would be asking me, why, why are your ankles broken? Because it's basically just rap. That's all it is. Anyways, I'm, I'm killing somebody. I love it. Whoever's been laughing all night long, that's great. I love that. Yeah. But we all love gifts, right, that keep on giving. And that's what I want to talk about tonight. We're in a series called 12 Disciples. It's a two-week series. It's very short. I wish it was a little bit longer, um, but last week we talked about the cost of being a disciple. What does a disciple mean? What does it mean to live as a true disciple, as an authentic disciple? And we talked about a couple of guys. Some of you guys remember their names. We talked about Peter. We talked about Andrew. Yeah, you said James. John. We talked about Matthew. You said Mark. That was really close. It's basically the same, but not, it's not the same at all. So we talked about Matthew, and we talked about how these guys were willing to drop everything to follow Jesus. And then we talked about three other guys that were not willing to drop everything to follow Jesus, right? 
And that's where we left off. And by that time, you know, Jesus had gotten his 12 disciples. He had called them, and he was rolling with them, and he was just doing their thing, right? But the problem is a lot of times, you know, we get these gifts, right? Because I want to talk about gifts tonight. We get these gifts, and we we open them up on Christmas Day. We unwrap them, and we're like, cool, I got it. And maybe for like a week, we're like, that was cool, and now we're over it. For instance, if you get a video game for Christmas last year, you played it, you beat it, then what'd you do? Okay, you played it again. Cool. It must have been that good. Um, The only video game that I know that you can just play on for eternity is literally Minecraft. Yes, Minecraft you can play forever. (laughs) Minecraft! (laughs) Yeah, so... Anyways, so like the thing is with us, like we, we get a gift and it's like, oh, that was cool. And then we're over it. But tonight I want to talk about the gift that Jesus promised his disciples. Jesus promised his disciples, not just the 12 that were following him, but all of us as disciples. He said, I've got a gift for you. And this gift is for everyone and anyone, right? And it lasts for forever. It lasts for eternity, which is awesome. So Jesus got his few together, he got his 12 together, and he told them all about these things, and and they lived life with Jesus. These disciples, they watched him heal people, they watched him, like, doing crazy, like, he he took blind people and he made them see, and they're like, wow, that's crazy. He calmed the seas, he did all these different things, he fed over 5,000 people, like, Jesus was straight putting in work, and the disciples were like, yeah, Jesus! We're your followers. And they were doing great things too, let's be real. Like they were going out into towns and they were spreading the name of Jesus. They are like, hey, Jesus is here. You should proclaim him as your Lord and Savior. It's going to be great. And then one day Jesus was like, hey, listen, I'm not going to be with you forever. Like I'm going to die. Actually, they're going to murder me. They're going to kill me. They're going to put me on a cross. But three days later, I'm going to raise myself from the grave. I'm going to come back from the grave. And you got to think about those disciples for a second. Like, I I kind of understand their pain. Like, they were like, wait, what? You're going to die? Like, they're going to kill you? No way. No way. Why why were they going to do that? Because think about it. These disciples, they dropped everything to follow Jesus. And now Jesus is saying, peace out. That's what it feels like, right? Jesus, aren't you Lord? Can't you just do whatever you want? Don't you have the authority to say no and just live with us for the rest of our days? But Jesus had to do this. And I don't think they really fully understood or comprehend comprehended that he was going to come back to the point where that's remember doubting Thomas right we talked about doubting Thomas for a little bit yesterday just like or last week just like a tiny little bit that's where he gets the name doubting because he was like no way Uh uh-uh see fast forward Jesus dies and he raises himself from the grave and little by little the disciples start finding out wow he is alive he is alive and I don't know where Thomas was at this point right because Jesus is is alive now, and he's hanging out with some of the disciples, and the disciples go back to Thomas and like, bro, we just hung out with Jesus. Where were you? I don't know where Thomas was. He was probably doing homework, maybe doing some chores, studying for that exam, that midterm. I don't know, maybe working, but he wasn't with his small group. Hang out with your small group, guys, and you'll see Jesus. You know what I'm saying? That's a shameless plug, but for real, like, he wasn't with them at that time, okay, And he was like, nope, I'm not going to believe it until I see it. I want to be able to touch him to be able to know that he is real and he is alive. So eight days later, John 20, we read this. Eight days later, the disciples were together again. And this time, there he is, Thomas was with them. The doors were locked, but suddenly, as before, Jesus was standing among them. Just suddenly. Like, they they were just chilling in their little small group space, right? Gosh, I love small groups. This is the best. And they were just hanging out. And then, boom, Jesus just like, hey, what's up? And I would have peed my pants. I'm serious. Like, I knew Jesus is, like, going to show up whenever throughout the 40 days. Cool. But, like, what? And I think that's why he said, peace be with you. That's, like, modern day for, like, whoa, whoa, it's cool. Chill out. It's just me. Right? Peace be with you. I would have been scared. Then he said to Thomas, because he knew, he's like, I'm about to prove it to you. Put your fingers here and look at my hands. Put your hand into the wound in my side. I'll be like, I'm good. I I believe you now. Thanks. I don't want to, right? And then he says, don't be faithless any longer. Believe. My Lord and my God, Thomas exclaimed. Then Jesus told him, you believe because you have seen me. Blessed are those who believe 
without seeing me. And I hope you get this point right here. He was like, it's cool, like you saw me, you believed me. But blessed are those who see or believe without seeing. Blessed are those who have faith that haven't seen me. Now here's the deal, as a true disciple, I can confidently say that I see Jesus working in and through me every single day. I do, I see his work transforming my life. Not only that, but I see his work through you guys. I see what you guys are doing. I want to give a shout out real quick to my boy, my boy Connor. Connor, stand up real quick. This man, you can stand up on your chair, man. Just stand up. Yeah, yeah. You, you don't even know why you're clapping for him. <laughs> Maybe some of you do. But Connor, I want you to look at everybody, and I want everybody to see you. And I'm not saying that he's the only one that does this in the room, but I see it. My man straight preaches on the IG. Like, he gets on Instagram, and he's like, I'm going to tell you what the gospel is. And he starts preaching, and I'm like, dang, let's go. And I don't know how many followers I have. I don't know how, how many followers you have. I don't really even care. If you got one follower, man, you're preaching them to Jesus. So give it up for Connor. I'm like, dang, this man's got some faith. Go ahead and sit down. And he brought his Bible. And he went to FCA on Friday, is what he told me. Anyways, so... I don't even know where I was going with that, but you did a good job, man. I'm proud of you. Dude has faith, and that's what I want to see in you guys. Like, I want to see you. What grade are you in, Connor? You're in seventh, man's in seventh grade. Come on, seniors. What have you done on your IG lately to spread the gospel? I don't know. Maybe. I haven't seen it, but I'm not on there all the time, but it just somehow works out where you straight preaching the word every time I look at your Instagram, and I love it, and I want to encourage you and tell you to keep it up, and I want to encourage everyone else, hey, Follow his example, because, man, he's preaching. Anyways, so, we got to have faith. You see, we're on the side of history where we don't see Jesus, but we see his works. We see his works through ourselves and through others. And that's what I was talking about with Connor. We see God's work through Connor. We can see God's work through you as disciples. But I think a lot of times we get scared, right? A lot of times we're fearful, but anyways, as Jesus is telling him, he's like, hey, I got to leave in a little bit. Like, I can't stay here forever. I've died. I've come back. Now I got to be with the Father. Like, I'm trying to be with the Father, and I'm only going to be here for 40 days. And so he, they're like, how are we going to do this? What's going to happen? We need you, Jesus. Like, we're, we need you. We, we, we need to know how to live life. And he's like, I got you. Remember the gift I told you about? Well, Acts 1, check this out. Once when he was eaten, this is Jesus, once when he was eaten with them, he commanded them, do not leave Jerusalem until the Father sends you the gift he promised. As I told you before, John baptized with water, but in just a few days, you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. That's a gift right there, the Holy Spirit. And you're like, what, what, is, who, who, what is the Holy Spirit? And a better way to ask that question is, who is the Holy Spirit? Well, the Holy Spirit is God dwelling within you. It's his spirit dwelling within you. Acts 1.8 puts it this way, and this is something that our church has been going through. Um, actually, we went through in November, and we, we learned all about Acts 1.8, and I just wanted to bring it back to our attention, but it says here, but you will receive power, Holy Spirit gives you power, when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, and you will be my what? Witnesses telling people about me everywhere in Jerusalem, throughout Judea, in Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. The gift is the Spirit of God. This is what they needed because they couldn't do it alone. They couldn't do it without Jesus. And Jesus was like, I got you. I'm going to take care of you. I love you. I care about you. I know what's best for you. So he gave them this gift. He gave them this gift of guidance. He gave him this gift of clarity. I think a lot of us, we see this gift and we're like, cool, you know, I'll open it later, right? We know about it. We've, we've read God's word or we've gone to church and we know that God gives us life, right? Because that's, a, that's the gift, right? God gives us life. And we see this and we're like, cool, that's great. I'll do it later. That's like waking up on Christmas Day and seeing all the gifts underneath the Christmas tree and say, nah, I'll just open it up later. Even though you kind of know, like, how great that gift might be, you're like, ah, I'll just do it later. Ah, I'll just do it when I'm in high school. I'll just open the gift when I'm in college. Ah, I'll just open the gift when I get married. I'll just open the gift when. Ah, today is the day 
to receive the gift of God, and that's life. And so as you open this gift, and I don't know how some of you open gifts, but like, I just go in. Um, some people are like, save the paper. And I'm like, Psh, it's Christmas. Anyways, and so you open it, right? And I'm not going to put the Holy Spirit, I'm not going to put God in a box because that's heresy. Um, but what I can do is this. When we open God's gift, we start seeing clearly. We're able to see clearly now. We have clarity, right? He starts guiding us. We start understanding our purpose. Can you imagine walking throughout life not being able to see? Or better yet, how about imagine if you were colorblind where you only saw like dark colors all the time, black and like dark grays. Like that would be terrible. But all of a sudden, you're given these glasses and you can see color. Wouldn't that be amazing? Like you walk throughout life and you're like, oh, that's cool, that's just black. Oh, that's just gray. Like, oh, yay. But then all of a sudden, boom, you start seeing clearly. You're like, wow, this is amazing. And that's what happened with the disciples. You see, I don't have time to go into all of chapter 2 of Acts. I wish I did, but I don't. But one of our core values here at Scotts Hill is that we study God's word. And I want to encourage you to study God's word tonight. So my challenge for you tonight is to read Acts 1 and Acts chapter 2. It's great. Please do it. Bet. You'll do it, right? Cool. Sweet. Bet. All right. Sweet. So the Holy Spirit comes upon them. They start seeing clearly, and they're just excited. They're so pumped on what God is doing in their life. And we see this in Acts chapter 2, verse 43. Check this out. It says, A deep sense of awe came over them all, and the apostles performed many miraculous signs and wonders, and all the believers met together in one place and shared everything they had. At this point, they had about 120 believers hanging out with them. And I love that. Their sense of awe came over them. And what did they do? They spent life together. They spent time together. They sold their property and possessions and shared the money with those in need. They worshiped together in the temple each day, met in homes for the Lord's Supper, and shared their meals with great joy and generosity, all the while praising God and enjoying the goodwill of all the people. And each day, I love this, the Lord added to their fellowship those who were being saved. The Holy Spirit was doing work through these disciples. And it wasn't just those 12 disciples. It wasn't just the 11 dudes, right? Because remember, Judas killed himself. It wasn't just them. It was 120. And then we start seeing that the Lord added to their fellowship every single day. We see this and it's like, man, that's crazy. That doesn't even make sense. Like, that's, that's awesome. That seems like living in Disney World. Like, it, they were just living life together and they were loving and they are being generous with each other. You see, if we look around this text, though, we see what the culture was like back then. Because it doesn't say, all the while, the Romans were looking after them. The Pharisees were hunting them down, right? They were murdering disciples. They were murdering people who said, yeah, I follow Jesus. But yet their number kept adding to them daily, the people who were being saved. These people were getting murdered, guys. These people were getting hunted down. But yet they're like still, yeah, I got clarity. It doesn't matter. I don't fear anymore. I can see clearly because I have the Holy Spirit living in me. I think a lot of times we get afraid. You know, we, we, we open this, this, this gift up and we receive God's gift of life in the Holy Spirit and we start seeing clearly. And maybe a year later, it starts getting scary. No longer do we want to share with our friends about the great gift that he has for us, Right? And then all of a sudden, we, we start getting scared. And what do we do when we get scared? We cover our eyes. When I watch a scary movie, I'm like, uh-uh, mm -mm, nope, skirt. Every time. And I don't even watch scary movies. Like when Miranda and I are like watching YouTube or we're watching like a movie or doing something and a, and a scary horror, like horror movie comes on, we're like, ah! We get scared. So we can't see it anymore. But do you guys remember the verse that I told you to memorize last week? Does anybody remember? Anybody? Yell it out to me. Yeah. Dang it. You're doing great, Connor. Come on. Who, anybody else? Anybody else remember it? Yeah, that was nice. Anybody else remember? 
He already said it, so you could just say it again. I just, I just want to hear it again. Okay, that's great. Anybody else got it? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, what was it? Yeah, and it says this right here. You ready? God doesn't give us a spirit of fear, but of love, of self-control. I'm sorry, of power, of love, and self-control. For God gave us a spirit not of fear, but of power and love and self-control. I even have a hard time memorizing sometimes, right? But God didn't give us a spirit of fear, right? He gave us a spirit of what? Power and of love and self-control. And sometimes it's going to take us self-control to say, you know, I'm not going to cover my eyes anymore because I'm walking in clarity. I'm walking with the Holy Spirit. There's no reason to be afraid. I can tell my friends about Jesus. But a lot of times we see our friends and we're like, ah, they don't need to know about Jesus. Ah, I don't need to tell them about Jesus. I'm good. Like, I'm okay. I'm just going to walk throughout life barely seeing. It's going to be great. No. God has given you power. And we got to have faith in that power, right? It's important that we have faith in that power. We can't close our eyes anymore. We might look a little crazy, but I think that's okay because what Jesus did for us was out of this world. And I'm okay with looking a little crazy, right? Because Jesus did it. Jesus did something amazing for us. He gave us life. He died for us. He rose himself up from the grave for us. 2 Corinthians 5 says this. It says, if it seems we are crazy, it is to bring glory to God. And if we are in our right minds, it is for your benefit. Either way, Christ's love controls us. What controls you? What controls you? Since we believe that Christ died for all, we also believe that we all have died to our old life. Next one. He died for everyone so that those who receive his new life will no longer live for themselves. Instead, they will live for Christ, who died and raised for them. Oh, I'm sorry. Who died and was raised for them. Sometimes it's hard to read sideways. Anyways, verse 16. So we have stopped evaluating others from a human point of view. At one time, we thought of Christ merely from a human point of view. How differently we know him now when you accept the Lord as your Savior and the Holy Spirit dwells in you, you start seeing clearly, you start seeing differently, you start seeing God differently, you start seeing the way you're supposed to live differently, you find purpose, you start understanding that you do have value. Students in the room from sixth grade to twelfth grade, you have value, you are beautiful, you are made in his image, you are a child of God. And I believe that every single person in this room can be an incredible leader for Christ. I believe that every single person in this room, no matter your flaws, no matter your past, no matter your fears, can be a true disciple and be in awe of what Jesus is doing through you. You have the ability because you have the Holy Spirit if you've accepted him as your Lord and Savior. We keep reading verse 17. This means that anyone who belongs to Christ has become a what? A new person. The old life is gone. A new life has begun. And all of this is a gift from God who brought us back to himself through Christ. And God has given us this task of reconciling people to him. Basically, it means just telling people about the good news of Christ and allowing them to accept the same gift that possibly you have already accepted. And that's my hope, that you have accepted that gift. See, we're called to be faithful in all these things. And if you don't understand the gospel, that was the gospel right there. That was the good news of Christ who has set you free. If you can't articulate it, I want you to memorize 2 Corinthians 5. Just, remember, just memorize that, the 2 Corinthians 5 clearly lays out the gospel and what he has done for you. Open up your Bible to a friend that doesn't know Christ and say, check this out. This is what happened to me and it can happen to you. Don't be afraid. Be faithful. Watch the spirit of God work in your life. Watch the spirit's power work in you. Sixth grader in the room, seventh, all the way to twelfth. It doesn't get any easier, but man, the Spirit 
gets richer and richer in our lives, the more we abide in him, the more we draw close to him. We can't live in fear. See, living faithfully means living fearlessly on mission. Students, are you ready to live fearlessly? Are you ready to look a little bit crazy for God? Because you have the power within you to do so. I think about the people of the Bible. I think about the people that were faithful. I mean, Noah, who was building this ark for years and years and years, and people thought he was crazy, but he was faithful to God's command and mission. I think about Moses. He was pretty scared, right? Freeing the Israelites, standing up to Pharaoh. He was faithful. And then they get to the Red Sea as the Egyptians were following them. And he takes his staff. He's being faithful. And he does something that we could never fathom or imagine, right? And he lays down that stick and the Red Sea completely parts. That's faith. You don't think that can happen today? I do. I believe it can happen. Are you faithful enough? I believe that it could be great things that happen in and through you because I'm not going to ever put the Spirit of God in a box. I'm not going to put God in a box. I think sometimes we do. We put our faith in a little box and we open it up on Sundays or Wednesdays. Students, I don't want you to do that. As a true disciple, it's limitless. The power of God is limitless within you. As you draw near to him, you're going to see infinitely more take place. Well, what's the mission? Let's go back to Acts 1.8. But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, and you will be my witnesses, telling people about me everywhere. Hebrews 12.2 says, we do this by keeping our eyes on Jesus, the champion who initiates and perfects our faith. Who are you looking at? What are you studying? What are you being consumed with? God's got great plans for you. And I would hate for you to squander it because you're living in fear. Keep your eyes on Jesus and live faithfully and fearlessly on mission.